In this video, we're going to look at determining rules for graphs of circular functions. Now, our sine curve and our so cosine curve both have this particular shape here. Sinusoidal wave is what they call it. And because it can be either modelled with a sine curve or a cos curve, they're going to have to give you the form of the equation. So they're need, going to need to tell you that it's a sine curve or a cos curve. Um, and which one to use. And to determine the rest of the formula, you just use the properties of the graph so that you can use uh, amplitude, period, and those kind of things. So let's have a look at some of the properties of the graphs again. So in our sine and cosine graphs, the A at the front represents the amplitude so that's this distance here between the mean value and the maximum or the mean value and the minimum. So it's kind of halfway between, it's the distance that's half of the range, if you like. So the range is the maximum to the minimum. So if you do maximum minus minimum and you find half of that, that will give you that distance in there. Um, the other way to do it is to say that the amplitude is from the midpoint of the maximum and the minimum. And so the midpoint is our mean value C, so this distance here. And you can find that by finding halfway between the maximum and the minimum, and then from there upwards. If you're after the mean value, you can actually add the two values in your range, your minimum and your maximum together, add them together and divide them by two. That will give you your midpoint. The period of a sine or a cosine curve is two pi on n, and it's the distance between any two equivalent points on the pattern. So from one point on the pattern to the next point, point that's in the same position on the next pattern. So you don't have to go from x-intercept to x-intercept. You can use any two points as long as they are the next period across, same position on the graph. For our tangent graph, our period is pi on n and our asymptotes are the odd numbered multiples of pi on 2 and they will be uh, dilated by n so it's hence the n on the bottom and they'll be shifted minus b the amplitude and the mean value for sine and cos have no definition here so this is just a dilation and this is just a vertical translation so the tangent graph has no amplitude at all. So let's do one example. So a graph with rule y equals a cos n x plus b has a range from negative 2 to 2, has a period of 6 and passes through the point 1 1. So that means when x is 1 y is equal to 1. So they want us to find the values for a, n and b. So let's start by finding our a value. Our range goes from negative 2 to 2. So there's our sine curve there. So our range goes from negative 2 to 2. So the halfway point between those two is zero, which means that our amplitude, that distance there, is a two. And so A is equal to two. Our period is six. So we know that our period for a, sine, for a cos curve is two pi on N. Our period is 6, so we say 6 is equal to 2 pi on n. So 6n is equal to 2 pi, which means n is equal to 2 pi on 6. So our n value is pi on 3. 
the very last value we need to find is our B value. And to do that, we're going to substitute in our A and our N value into the formula. And then we're going to substitute in our 0.11. And our 0.11 means when X is equal to 1, Y is equal to 1. So let's go ahead and substitute that in. So that gives us 1 is equal to 2 cos. Now pi on 3 times 1 is just pi on 3 plus B. So now we have an equation that has 1 unknown in it, B, and we're going to solve that equation for B. So let's go ahead and do that. So rearranging that equation, we get half equal to cos of pi on 3 plus B. From our exact values, we know that cos of pi on 3 is in fact equal to a half. So therefore, cos of pi on 3 plus b must be equal to cos of pi on 3. So therefore, b must be equal to 0. These two angles here must be equal, and hence, b must be equal to 0. And so, the question asked us to find A, N, and B. So we've got A there, N there, and B there. 